cross curriculum. Cross curriculum. Oh, okay. Even the heads can't keep up to date with it. <laughs> Merging together subjects to joining subjects together in a cross. <laughs> okay, cross curriculum learning, being creative with the curriculum, linking science and numeracy and literacy with other subjects. I think it is worth assessing cross-curricular work. In fact, I think it's essential. Well, I think you have to, because the idea of cross-curriculum working isn't that it's something that's not assessed or it's outside of what they should be learning. It's fundamental to what they should be learning, but you're linking things together. I think it gives you a picture as to whether a child can transfer skills um, throughout different subjects and not just apply them within one subject. I think when you do assess in cross-curricular areas, we need to to look at creative ways of doing it. So it might be making it a quiz, uh, it might be in the skills that we're developing um, and observing how they're interacting with each other through those cross-curricular experiences. Assessing how well they're doing with those skills and what level they've achieved, um, not necessarily in terms of national curriculum levels, but how well they can actually put those skills into practice, I think it's essential. We might get them to step back and really evaluate their performance in something, uh, evaluate each other's performance. Uh, that's a very effective tool and they appreciate, if it's done in the right way, what they have to say about each other's work. Creativity is all about making new connections and cross-curricular activities are about making connections across the subjects. It can become stale if you don't sort of play about with it and mix things up. Well, I think one of the really good things about cross-curriculum work is that it does allow you to be much more creative. But it can be great to be teaching geography and literacy or teaching science and maths and, you know, it kills two birds with one stone, A, and it can make maths lessons are more interesting to be talking about science. For me that's one of the huge benefits of cross-curriculum learning. It gives you a chance to create exciting learning environments which the children get involved in and are completely committed to. I think shared experience is core to and essential to good learning and perhaps we don't do it enough. I think you can do cross-curriculum work without having a trip or a speaker or whatever but it just adds an extra dimension to it. It completely engages them, it gets them so really completely involved in, what, in the learning and, that, and it's real for them, you know, you can't talk about Seaside without going to it and you shouldn't. And I remember um, um, a few years ago um, on a coach driving towards the seaside and the girl burst in, into tears and I said, well, what's wrong? She's never seen the sea before. She's never been out of a, a local area before. In year six, they learn about Antarctica. One of the things they do is in winter to stand in this playground as a penguin colony in a huddle. And the outside group move in, the inner group moves to the back and they truly experience how they keep warm in the cold of Antarctica. So having those shared experiences and bringing them back to school actually develop children's thinking skills and learning skills and ideas and concepts. And sometimes it just might be in your classroom. You know, sometimes uh, we were doing traditional tales and I uh, changed my classroom into a, a place that the three bears had uh, basically wrecked. <laughs> and the children walked in and like, oh my word, what's going on here? And then we had to investigate it and write a you know, take the story from there. I mean, our, our, we turned our classroom into a rainforest. It was, the children really enjoyed it. They were going home and finding things out about the rainforest. Their parents said they were talking to them more than they ever have about what was going on at school. So it wasn't just a shared experience with the children, 
um, it was involving the parents in their children's learning and what was going on at school. You're all starting at the same point and you're not expecting anything, there's no assumed knowledge. Um, so they, they, they all learn from the same point. I think it's always a good idea to get the children to share what they already know and to have the kind of classroom culture where everybody's very relaxed about giving information in front of other people. And I think as long as you're cross-referencing your objectives between your discrete teaching and your cross-curriculum teaching, then you're not going to miss anything and you're giving repeated experiences for children to try things out and to consolidate their knowledge and their skills. When I was a classroom teacher, I'd be in the, in the classroom saying to the children, what do you know about this particular subject, you know, and, um, and what do you want to know? You might do data handling in mathematics. You might use that knowledge in geography or in science. So when you put it in a context, it makes it a lot more meaningful for the children. So they actually almost sometimes don't realise they're learning something or they're, they're doing something. So it's a using of the skills and knowledge that the children have acquired previously, taking it across and broadening it out. Uh, it's got a lot more meaning. I was about to say, do you know what I mean? <laughs> To be honest, I can't think of a subject that I couldn't link at some point in some way. Everything could be linked. There's loads of links, but it's how tenuous they are. <laughs> it is about common sense, what goes really well together. If you're looking at the ancient Greeks, then you can look at mosaic as art. I don't think there are subjects you shouldn't link together. In fact, I was trying to think, I don't think there are, are any subjects that you can't. I think the trouble is, when you start linking subjects together for the sake of it. For example, RE, we do teach quite discreetly, but sometimes that fits in with science, for example, festivals of light. So it's, me it's meaningful and natural links. Otherwise, it's kind of forcing something that doesn't fit and it will be as confusing to the children as it is for you. I, I never say never. <laughs> We plan our lessons in the subject areas of the national curriculum and as we plan, we look for really strong... <laughs> you start with objectives and then you look at what's common amongst the subjects that you have to teach. P possibly I would start with the science plan first and then feed that into the literacy plan um, rather than the other way around. We plan in subject areas but whilst we plan, we're always looking for the links that can move across the curriculum. And we find that a more productive way of, 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 of planning because it keeps the focus very, very clear. That's, that's where we started from, looking at the renewed framework. The units from it are, are great. They offer loads and loads of opportunities for cross-curriculum links. So we sort of use that as a backbone. You've got the science objectives already covered, but then you, can f then you know which specific knowledge you can use and feed into the literacy tasks. You can start to look at certain topics which might act as an umbrella for all the others and then you've got some sort of topic that you can slide your subjects into and slide the objectives into. Does that make sense? We try and make the topics relevant to these children here in this school. I think cross-curriculum working allows children to see links across the subjects and I think that's part of making it relevant to them. These aren't things they're learning in isolation. If you can get parents to come in and talk about their own experiences, that's also making it a little bit more relevant for the children in the class. We're very close to Hampton Court Palace, so I know Tudors is a, a, a history topic that will be taught, but it's one that we definitely need to teach in this school. We've sold our plants that we've grown in the past in an enterprise day activity makes it relevant that we're not just growing plants for the sake of it, we're growing plants and understanding how to grow plants so that we can sell them. So we need to grow healthy plants and we've become like um, little florists and greengrocers and things. Cross-curricular 
topics are all about children applying uh, prior knowledge in a more um, open way, if you like, across a range of subjects. So we're comparing Cockgrave, see where the children live, with a seaside location, which is Skegness. Great Far of London is a great topic to web and use in amongst lots of other subjects. If we take, for example, the Tudors, we might look at Tudor dance, we might look at Tudor portraits. And we're linking our art into it now, where we're actually making a, a model village of a sort of a mixture of Skegness and Co Cockgrave. It's also something that if you ask a Year 6 child who's been in Year 2, they'll always remember Great Fire of London. It's one of those topics that just works. I, I think the reason for doing it is to make learning more exciting and more meaningful for children. Because children don't learn in small boxes. Sometimes um, when they're learning things for the sake of learning it becomes quite dull and it's, it's not as relevant as it could be to them and I think the minute you start to link things together they start to have a more holistic view of what you're trying to teach them. By having cross-curriculum learning it means that you, you're a bit more freer with your time. One of, the one of the main reasons that we've sort of looked at it is because staff were getting really frustrated with the compartmentalising subjects. Because you're pooling time across curriculum areas, you've got longer to look at an issue than perhaps you would normally have. So I think you sometimes get deeper learning rather than um, if you de dealt with all of these things separately. I used to find I had piles and piles and piles of things that were started but not finished because I did my hour long slot and, and some of them maybe got some of it done but they didn't. But now I spend as much time as I need to spend making sure that a task, an activity has been completed thoroughly, that the understanding is there and that they've applied these skills effectively. It gives teachers more freedom, it allows you to be more creative with your teaching and for the children they can see their learning journey. From a teacher perspective, that's what I like about cross-curriculum working. Um, what else? <laughs> what, don't know. what shouldn't they do? Um, you'll have to ask the others this. The big no-nos for me are being careful that we don't slip back into some sort of um, old-fashioned old type of teaching that doesn't have any rigour, doesn't have any progression and doesn't really pay any attention to the national curriculum. I think you have to be careful that you're still achieving the objectives that you set out to achieve because there's a danger if you're not careful with your monitoring that you either skip some out or you overdo the same ones. I think what doesn't work is if you think of a topic, uh, say a, a bus, and that's going, you're going to look at buses, and then you try and link in all the areas of the curriculum to one particular area, because that way you're going to be trying to look for links that might be spurious or weak, and you're going to spend a lot of time trying to explain what the link is, when actually it's not supporting the learning that you want the children to have at the end. I think sometimes you can overdo it when they come in and they are saying, oh, not the Aztecs again, then you know you've gone too far. It's probably making sure that you've got enough time rather than things going really badly. No, I, I honestly can't think of a time when we have done cross-curriculum work and thought, oh, no, that didn't work at all. Mm -hmm.